How's it going ladies and gents, my name's Andy, and today we're gonna take a look at 5 ridiculous soldiers who fought in World War II. Now these guys are not the most iconic people, and you probably have never even heard of some of them. But during their time in the war, they've accomplished some ridiculous feats that either turn the tide of a battle or just things that seem unbelievable. Alright, without further ado, let's begin. John R. McKinney McKinney was a United States soldier who received the Medal of Honor for his efforts in World War II. His most memorable campaign was in the Philippines when him and a couple of other guys were in charge of fending off Japanese troops in 1945. On May 11, 1945, Private McKinney was in charge of defending a small area occupied by US soldiers, keeping a lookout for any intruders. But then, in the early morning, a wave of Japanese forces snuck past a guard post and attacked an area filled with US troops on an island called Luzon. They were equipped with swords, machine guns, and some explosives too, and most of the US troops were sleeping at this time and they could not react fast enough. However, McKinney was awake and he came to the rescue and single-handedly protected his comrades against over 100 Japanese soldiers. Yeah, he was shooting them down with insane accuracy and even took to using hand-to-hand -to -hand combat when he got up close. He was doing all of this while running around, taking cover from grenades and dodging machine gun fire in the middle of the battlefield. According to this quote from when he received his Medal of Honor, in the melee, the machine gun was rendered inoperative, leaving him only his rifle, with which to meet the advancing Japanese who hurled grenades and directed knee mortar shells into the perimeter. He warily changed positions, secured more ammunition, and reloaded repeatedly, cut down waves of the fanatical enemy with devastating fire or clubbed them to death in hand-to-hand -hand combat. When assistance arrived, he had thwarted the assault and was in complete control of the area. So yeah, at the end of the assault, 38 Japanese troops were killed and the others fled the scene. All because of this ridiculous effort by John McKinney. Number 2, a 12 year old boy by the name of Calvin Graham. Shortly after the Japanese forces bombed Pearl Harbor, the United States was desperately looking for new recruits to help them on the battlefield. One of those new recruits was a man who, well, not even a man, he was just a kid. A 12 year old boy named Calvin Graham, who joined the US Navy in 1941. So how did someone this young get in? Was he kidnapped? Well the answer is no, Calvin Graham actually decided by himself to join the war. When he was only 11 years old, he hatched a plan to lie about his age and join the navy. The main thing that triggered his decision was because, well, his family life wasn't in the best condition. He had an abusive stepfather and he knew that some of his cousins have died during the battles, which made him really sad and angry too, that he couldn't help. And that was his main motivation to go out there and fight. To be honest, it was a common practice back then for people to lie about their age and get onto the battlefield, but usually they were still like 14 or 15 year old teenagers. Calvin was just 12, 5 foot 2 inches tall, barely going through puberty, and it was surprising that he was able to even fool the officials into believing he was older. Anyway, his most well known accomplishment happened during the summer of 1942. One of the United States most prized battleships, the USS South Dakota was subject to a ton of damage and was on the verge of sinking. The ship was looking like it was a lost cause and the US Navy was deciding whether or not they should keep trying to pursue it and save it. But fortunately, Calvin Graham was one of the passengers on the ship and he was able to single handedly bring it back up to the surface. There were still a lot of casualties but the fact that a 12 year old boy, well I guess he was 13 at the time, the fact that he was able to save the ship all by himself, that's really amazing. And Calvin's efforts in World War II will be in the history books forever. Number 3, Fritz Kristen. Is anyone familiar with Operation Barbarossa? If you aren't, I'll give you some background info. Operation Barbarossa was the largest military operation in history just by the sheer numbers. It lasted for about 4 years and it resulted in the death of nearly 4 million Soviets and up to 6 or 7 million more were captured or wounded. However, this operation also eventually led to the downfall of Nazi Germany. 
because about a half million German troops also died, and they also suffered major, major losses in supplies and artillery, which they could not recover from. Anyway, during Operation Barbarossa, Fritz Christen was in charge of using an anti-tank gun, and he was hiding behind some trees as he saw a huge line of Soviet tanks rolling in. Kristen took down six tanks, but then when he turned around, he quickly realized that the rest of his comrades were dead. He was the last man standing, and the Soviets were continuing to bring backup. Kristen, the lone German soldier, scoured around the forest trying to find extra ammo for his gun, trying to find food and water because he was basically surrounded at this point with no light at the end of the tunnel. So every few hours, he would frantically run around and hide, trying to avoid the Soviet sights, while also using his gun and taking down even more tanks. After about three days of non-stop scavenging, the German supports finally arrived and helped him drive away the rest of the Soviets. Kristen ended up killing 13 tanks and over 100 Soviet soldiers all by himself. Number 4, Fazl Din Din was from India, part of the Jat family, and there was a huge number of them who joined the army around the time the war broke out. Din was leading a small group of soldiers and attacked a Japanese bunkered area. But when they were about to start their attack, Din and his crew all of a sudden got ambushed. A couple of Japanese soldiers equipped with swords assaulted Din and he ended up getting stabbed right through the chest. Apparently, the wound was so deep that the end of the sword poked out from the other side of his back. Jeez, yikes. But despite this ridiculous wound, Din was able to pull the sword out of his own body and then kill the Japanese officer with it. He killed the guy with his own sword after getting stabbed by it. With basically a hole in his chest, Din continued to fight them off. He killed two more Japanese soldiers before finally dying. That's just crazy. Despite being fatally wounded, Din was able to hold off the assault and lead the troops out of there before they had any more casualties. The most impressive part too was that he was only 23 years old at the time of his death, and he was also posthumously awarded with the Victoria Cross. The highest award of honor given to people who committed a, quote, most conspicuous bravery or some daring or preeminent act of valor or self-sacrifice or extreme devotion to duty in the presence of the enemy. Number 5, Hiroyoshi Nishizawa. Nishizawa was an ace fighter serving for the Japanese Navy. He is widely credited to have over 100 aerial kills at the time of his death, which was just at a young 24 years old. Most of his successful kills came against the US and Australian Air Forces in battles near New Guinea. Nishizawa's final aerial campaign was near the Philippines. It was October 25, 1944, and he helped prepare for Japan's first major kamikaze attack. Now, surprisingly enough, he wasn't the actual guy sacrificing himself. He was just there to escort the volunteers who wanted to do it, so he just flew them to the battlefield, where they started their whole kamikaze. However, during the flight there, he said he experienced a vision. A vision of his own death, in the near future, right there in the Philippines. And lo and behold, that's exactly what happened. In the next day, Nishizawa and a few other pilots entered a transport aircraft to get them out of the Philippines and back to Japan. But unfortunately for him, the transport aircraft got shot down by two US fighter planes. Nishizawa was a passenger and he got killed along with everyone else on the aircraft. After his death, he was honored as one of the greatest ace fighters in history. And that's all folks, thank you everyone for watching, I hope y'all enjoyed that video, and I'll see you next time. Peace.